Now to discuss the impact of the climate crisis across Iran and the potential for renewable solutions uh, is the director for the Center for Environmental Policy at the Imperial College in London, Dr. Kaveh Madani, who joins us via satellite from Paris. Uh, Dr. Madani, it's so nice to meet you in person. I've been talking to you on Twitter, but it's really nice to see your face and connect with you as well. Uh, good morning. What are the major impacts of the climate crisis? We'll start there. What are the big impacts in Iran? Um, Iran is, is um, naturally a, a dry area and climate change is going to make it drier and hotter and dry areas of the world you need um, to irrigate to grow food so your, your capacity to grow food would be uh, more limited. Um, we have the mixture of anthropogenic and climate, uh, climatic changes which make of the problem uh, really complex to, to understand and, and solve. And, and right now we are seeing a lot of signs here and there of, of the anthropogenic changes, like you know, short-term impacts by the Iranians themselves, plus the, the effects from climate change, um, drying lakes, um, uh, land subsidence, groundwater uh, drawdown, um, desertification, uh, soil erosion, uh, dust storms, uh, and, and many, many other problems, ecosystem degradation, and lots of problems. So of the mixture, uh, mixture of all problems, plus we get both you know, floods and droughts in Iran, so extreme events, high, high temperatures and low temperatures. So it's, it's really a, a mixture of all problems you can name, plus we have the coastal regions which can be affected by, by sea level rise. Yeah, it's a very diverse country in the way, in its geography, I guess is the way we would put it. So is there an area that we notice more impact or less impact, or is there just generally impact all over this nation as well? Um, it is really hard, as I said, to disaggregate the uh, the human impacts at a moment because we're we, the Iran is a developing country still. It, it's building its dams, a, a lot of infrastructure is being being built. So it's it's really hard to disaggregate. But we we are seeing trends uh, in in different parts of the country. Um, in in southwest, for example, the Khuzestan province, a, a, border, a border province, um, is is seeing a lot of frequent dust storms right now. Uh, having both uh, re, uh, regional or, or local sources plus transboundary sources. We, we didn't have this problem in the past. In Northwest, we have Lake Rumia. It's, it's, it's a lot of debate is going on where, about like whether this is a climate-related event or a human, uh, a human event, a human-affected um, system. But, but we know climate change has some role there. We cannot sure. ignore this role. And, and, and the public has, uh, you know, really see, see the effects, mainly through the lack of water resources at the moment. So I think the Iranians in general believe in climate change and appreciate the, the, the magnitude of the problem. Well, when the rest of the world thinks about Iran's economy, we think of it being a nation that is rich in fossil fuels and uses them and sends them all over the world. So what are the long-term risks of continuing on this um, use of your rich resource of fossil fuels? This is a very double-edged problem. So, so uh, yes, um, when you have um, cheap uh, resource of fossil fuel, you, you will use them first of all at, at, at your at in your country plus you you export them but when the price of oil drops you you have um, lack of financial resources even when you want to change and, and adapt yourself to climate change and mitigate climate change so uh, right now the countries in the region are facing financial uh, problems they don't they don't have the required financial resources to to make changes uh, yeah, the other problem is what we are seeing right now in, in, in the Middle East. The countries which relied on, on uh, income from oil and gas resources are now in, in trouble. So they have bu budget uh, problems, and th this is not even a problem of future. It's, it's something that we are experiencing right now. So the, we know that um, the OPEC countries, the oil-rich countries, cannot go on forever and, and make money off the fossil fuels because the rest of the world is trying to make their, their um, economy independent from um, fossil fuels, and that, that's an important uh, factor for Iran. Plus, when you burn oil and gas at home, we see what we see in Iran. We have air quality yeah, issues uh, resulting from um, burning, burning oil at home, and, and those problems cannot be ignored. Well, 
we've talked a little bit about Iran being a developing nation, and you mentioned that in some of the um, less urban areas, people are already noticing these effects. But what are the conversations in the more urbanized areas and among the political leadership? What are the conversations about climate change, about reducing the impact of burning fossil fuels? Are you hearing those conversations now, or are they conversations that people still don't really want to have? Uh, you know, people people talk about the environmental issues together with lots of other problems that they have. Um, and I, I don't I don't want to say that you know people in urban areas are all uh, only concerned about climate change. They see the environmental problems in Iran. Uh, Lake Rumia is perhaps uh, the the you know what we saw about Lake Rumia is a, is a turning point in Iran's environmental history. Iran is is now aware of of the, its environmental degradation. Of course, they see climate change as one of the drivers, but they see other problems as well. They have started talking about it. Uh, we see that politicians also react to this. Um, the president made a lot of promises during his campaign about about um, about um, you know doing something about the environment. We see the budget. Uh, uh Priorities. So when they talk about it, water, wastewater, and, and environment being among the uh, top priorities, um, the the parliament has ratified the Paris deal. That's a very great news in in in, in November, and this was by only a few negative votes in in the parliament. So uh, the country is committed to to reducing it, its greenhouse gas emissions by four uh, percent. Even uh, they they think they can go up to twelve percent if they get financial aid, um, and and this is this might not sound ambitious, but it's I think more realistic that that the promises that the Iran made or plans it had in the past. So politicians are are talking about climate change, whether they can can um, implement it and and and, and uh, materialize what they have promised. That's something to to worry about, but but at least they're talking about it in in all uh, polit political loops. I believe. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I think those numbers are ambitious for a nation that is so rich in fossil fuels, where it's so easy just to rely on them. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you You, you mentioned the, the air pollution. There are some things going on in Iran right now that just make people want to talk about changes. And then Vice President Gore showed us that your country is so perfect for not only wind, but has this perfection, this abundance of solar uh, capability. So what would it take to get these things moving in your country? And are those conversations being had? Um, the country is, is moving forward. They, uh, um, we, the, you know, the, at least the plans show that uh, Iran is, is planning to add five gigawatts of, of renewables, and they have already uh, d implemented and, and, and developed a part of this. But, uh, but, but lack of financial resources, as I said, is, is a major problem in, in, in the Middle East. So um, the government is opening doors, trying to open doors for foreign investments, and this should be a good time for foreign investors interested in helping Iran's environment, plus making a good and reasonable return from um, from um, renewable um, the renewable market in, in Iran. Iran is on the solar belt, but let's not forget that the dust storm can uh, dust storms ah, can limit the capacity sure. of, of solar produ production. Uh, we can we can have wind in Iran. Um, uh, geothermal energy is quite promising. We have a lot of waste to turn into energy, so turning waste to energy should be uh, it, it, it is on the agenda. The government has buying. Uh, Tar you know, feed in tariffs for buying back uh, these these energies that you produce. Uh, the new rules allow selling electricity in private market. So this is another attractive financial incentive for those interested in the problem. But let's not forget that the country is dealing with a lot of problems, like any other developing nation. So environment is is, is normally a thing that it turns out to be a limit to growth. So you you address it when when there when something goes wrong. But when it comes to renewable a lot of ambitious plans are already on the table. You make a good point that for developing nations, so much time is spent on growth that sometimes there's not a lot of conversation that is spent on the environment of those nations when you're trying to get growth going. Let's talk a little bit about, we've talked about the air pollution, let's talk a little bit about water issues in Iran. Um, you certainly have them because so much of the country is arid, but we're seeing the placement of very heavy rains and very heavy mudslides in the, in the areas that do get rain and then widespread drought in the areas that would normally get little rain. Now it seems like there's none. So what's the conversation around that? And is there the awareness that this is a changing climate? 
Um, so, so again, we cannot fully attribute this to climate change. And, and actually, if you fully attribute this to climate change, we open doors for not taking actions because then we say that this is a global phenomena. It's not our fault. It, it's definitely our fault as, a, as Iranians because we got the development wrong. We, de, we got the concept wrong like the West. We tried to copy the West, still trying to copy sure. the West in terms of producing the problems you guys have had right. and reproducing those. So, so um, water... Is, is a problem that everyone in the country is aware of. Now, the amount of action and, you know, uh, what we are doing as citizens, as, as experts, uh, is, is, is questionable. I don't think we're doing enough about it. But, you know, the, the whole country is confused about the problems. We, we have long drought. We have freak, more frequent droughts. We get crazy uh, snowfalls like, you know, two weeks ago, we yeah. uh, Tehran stopped <laughs> operations because of heavy uh, snowfall right after, uh, you know, ep an episode sort of air pollution that, sure. you know, shut down the city. Um, so the country is confused about all these things. But we know we have lost snowpack, which is the natural reservoir. It is important for us. Uh, because we don't have surface water, we have gone after our groundwater. This is a major problem yeah. in Middle East and in, in Iran. So it's a major hidden tragedy and that no one is paying attention to. A lot of problems we have are similar to problems in California and you know United States West. Unfortunately, we are behind and our economy is weaker, so we cannot handle with the problem. Plus, uh, add the fact that for Middle Easterns, um, food security is always a problem. So the conspiracies around that, they don't want to be um, dependent on other nations. They know there is no problem with energy security. Food security is Shall they produce at home? Shall they rely on imports? And what happens if uh, political tensions increase? In this region, we know that it's unique for the amount of political tensions it always has. Yeah, I think you've explained it really, really beautifully. And I think making the comparison for Americans to going after the groundwater in a drought-stricken area like California and going after it there, and I, it, it's happening in the same way. And even though you're a developing nation, and you're right, you, you know, the West hasn't given you a lot of things to uh, that we've done right or that we're doing right now. Let's talk a little bit about those dust storms, though, because early on you mentioned that some of them um, were locally produced and some of them are traveling for great distances. Uh, is there any way possible, even if we did everything we think we should do, we couldn't really eliminate dust storms there, but, but would you notice the difference, do you think? Uh, yes, if, if we take actions, we, we will, but the problem is that we, we learn about problems after we create them. This is a new problem that, you know, I warned the whole world about. We will have drying beds uh, of, of lakes and, and, and um, wetlands that would create a lot of dust and salt, you know, uh, and, and deposited, you know, going, traveling around the world and being deposited elsewhere, people need to migrate. They will face a lot of health problems like we are seeing these on a day-to-day -day basis right now in Iran. Um, but lots of these problems are transboundary. They're traveling into your country. What can you do about it? Um, you keep negotiating with your neighbors who are suffering from a lot of uh, other problems, war and, and political instabilities that you know make solving this problem really hard. But this is definitely another problem that um, the whole world should be worried about, and it limits our 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 you know, adaptation capacity, our mitigation capacity, our capacity um, to produce um, um, energy, renewable energy, and lots of lots of other problems. But sure, we if we try to keep our soil moisture high, if we try to irrigate in a right way, if we don't go crazy about development, and if we understand development right, we can mitigate this problem. This is, this is we are humans, we are smart. We should be able to solve the problems that we have created our, ourselves. Dr. Madani, this has been a joy it's for me. It's hard, right? You know, political um, barriers are there. Yeah, 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 of course. And I think, you've, I think you've explained um, the problems particular to that region very, very well for those of us who don't know it well. So thank you for doing that for us uh, today. And also thank you for drawing the parallels to our own community so we can understand that that our, our struggles are very similar no matter where we are in the world. Kavi, I'll continue to follow you on Twitter, and we'll be talking uh, certainly later on today on Twitter. So thank you very much, sir.